the heck? Oh. For some reason, the audio on that first thing, my thing was muted. I don't know why, but oh well. You're good.
Okay, here we go. Now if I call on you, the next time I call randomly on someone, if I call you again, you don't, you don't have to answer. Y'all ready? Okay. Okay, Google. Give me a random number between 1 and 26. Okay. Twenty-six. Wow, okay. So, it's gonna be Lorenzo. Where's Lorenzo? Where are you at? All right, Lorenzo, did you talk with your table? Have they conferred? Because the whole ship's gonna go down here with you. Okay. Sixty, six, zero, and negative four hundred. Okay, so X is sixty, and X is negative four hundred. All right, everybody at that table agrees. Yes. Okay. Any tables disagree? Okay. Uh oh. Any tables agree? You agree? Uh oh. You agree for 60, for not for negative 400? Oh, okay. All right. Good. I don't know what the answer is yet. So, uh, let's see here. Who else wants to get uh, guess? Who else wants to share a possible answer here? Go ahead. Uh, so we got uh, 60 and 400. And positive 400? Okay. Anyone get anything different? What do you got? Both negative? Okay, is that your whole table? <laughs> Y'all are split on this? You got both negative? All right. Any, any other answers out there? Anybody get something different? I mean, don't feel bad if you did. Look, we already have a lot of variation here in answers. No? So this, these are our possible answers? All right, I guess I'm going to have to work through this one. Let's take a vote. How many of you think it's the top one? or got, How many of you got the top one? Or have you all changed your mind? You changed your mind now? OK, so what, is, what do you think it is? The second one? OK, this one right here. The group that got this, do you all change your mind or no? No? Math seems OK? Okay, show of hands, how many of you uh, agree with the second one? Ooh, this is looking like a very strong possibility here. And here, the first one, anyone's, no one's sticking with that one? And this last one, you're sticking with, that's your, okay, so we're gonna, I'm thinking with the numbers that we just saw that either a lot of people are wrong or maybe there's something wrong in your, with, but think about it this way. We shouldn't get two negative answers. Be, I mean, just within the framework of the problem, this means that they would have to sell negative amount of bicycles to have zero profit. So I go back and look at your work, see if there's, there's something you can find in there. All right? We're going to go with 60 and 400. I'm not going to do the work. Let's, let's go with it. All right? So let's try and understand what's happening graphically here. If we were to graph x, which is the number of bikes, or I'm going to put bikes here, that we sell. If we were to graph that as our x-axis, and here's our profit, right? What we're saying is that when x is 40, wait, no, what was it, 60? 60 and 400? When x is 60 and when x is 400, the profit function is 0, which means what could I draw on my graph and where would I draw it? What would I do here? Okay, this is a parabola. Okay, you should recognize that this is a parabola from the function itself. 
This is a quadratic. Quadratics look like parabolas. If there's a negative in front, the parabola opens down like this, right? So we know that. But, but the break-even points, what are they on the graph? Like, what, what are they? If I go to draw the break-even points, where am I going to put them? They're x-intercepts. They are where our, our graph hits the x-axis. So I know that my graph hits there. And I also know that my graph looks something like this, right? And that's my profit function. That makes sense? Yes? No? Yes? Yes? No? Okay. If my profit, or I'm sorry, if the number of bikes is between, if the number of bikes that we sell is between 60 and 400, my profit is above the x-axis, which means I'm going to have pop. I just grabbed this out of the teacher workstation. I think what they're doing is they're coming in here and they're grabbing all the dead ones and then putting them back in our workstations and having us come back out here. They don't want to buy new ones for us, I guess. Okay, plus, that's positive profit, isn't it? Anything in this region. And then negative profit will occur over here and over here. Do we all understand that? This is what it's telling us? Okay. I think we're ready to move on to part C. Part C says to find the number of bicycles that will maximize the profit. And then find the maximum profit. So what are they asking us to find here? The what? Uh, the vertex, the highest point on this graph. That's what part C is asking for. Part C wants us to identify this point right here, which is called the vertex. And does anybody remember the vertex has, is a point, right? And it has two coordinates. Usually we call it x and y, but for a vertex, they're very special. We call it h and k. Do you all remember this about parabolas? This is 1324. Yes? And in your 1324 class, you were told how you can find these. There were formulas for them. And I'm willing to bet that they're on your sheet. Let's see. Are they there? Look under uh, page I, where it says quadratic functions. Do you all see that there? And do you see where it says x coordinate of vertex? It says x coordinate vertex and it says x is equal to negative b over 2a. Y'all see that? Does that look familiar to you? Okay, yeah. it should. This is, in, in my classes, I didn't call it x, I called it h. And then, how do you find k? The formula sheet doesn't show it. I don't believe it shows how do you find k. Plug it in. You plug it in, exactly. You take this answer and you plug it into the function. So you take that answer, h, and you plug it into the function. In this case, our function is p, but I'm just going to put f of h. So please recall and put that into your memory bank. You'll need to know that in order to find the vertex. All right, so let's first find h. And h would be this value right here. k would be how, how high it is. Okay, so to find h, I need to come back to the profit function, and I need to compute negative b over 2a, which will be negative 1380 over 2 times negative 3. So I'm just, remember this is a, b, and c, so I'm going to go negative this, and then 2 times that. Who has that for me? Anyone have that for me? What do you get? 230. Okay. 230. That's h. Now to find k, we're going to take that 230 and we're going to plug it into this function for x. So I'll do that up here. k is equal to p of 230, which means we're going to take negative 3 times 230 squared plus 1380 times 230, and then minus 72,000. There we go. 
So I'm just plugging that answer into this. So if you get H wrong, K is going to be wrong also, isn't it? Okay, so we have to be real careful when we calculate H. All right, let me go ahead and grind this thing out. I'm, gonna, I'm going to trust that you can do this on your calculator. I'll give you the answer, and if you get something different, then I suggest you go back and practice on your calculator getting this. Um, time 1380. Anybody want to tell me what they got? I've got the same thing. So this comes out to be 86,700. All right, now let's interpret the answer so that we can answer part C correctly. What is the number of bicycles that will maximize your profit? 230. We must sell 230 bicycles. So that is this. And then what is the maximum profit? $86,700. We good? All right. Let's proceed. I'm just going to put this one up here and we're not going to work through it, but I want you to see that this is pretty much the same thing. Give you a cost function, give you a revenue function, ask you for the profit function ask you for the break-even points, and then find the number of uh, golf clubs that will maximize profit. And then what's the max? It's the same thing, isn't it? Same exact work. You're going to wind up having a quadratic again. You'll have to use a quadratic formula. And you're done. OK, that's it. That's the end of classwork one. And now we are going to start a new section. So this is going to be section uh, 10.1, and the title of this section is Limits. All right, I want to officially welcome you to the calculus part of this class. We, we now transition into this wonderful subject called calculus. I have a graph up here. And I don't want you to really care at all about like what type of graph that is, like that sort of function. I mean, it's a polynomial function. Who cares? This is the graph of a function, OK? I would like for you to take a look at what's happening to the function at the value of 2. So I, I'm asking you to tell me what f of 2 is. Can you tell by looking at this graph what f of 2 would be? Just from, from the picture, does it look like something to you? Take a guess. I mean, I'm not going to. About what? If, if, I, if I say plug 2 into this function, what is the value of the function at 2. It looks like it's about 8. Do you all agree? And if you took 2 and plugged it in here, you would get 8, OK? But I'm, I'm asking you to look at the picture. Do, does everyone agree that f of 2 looks like it's 8? Yes? All right. 
that question I just asked you is not a calculus question. Right? That has nothing to do with calculus. That's an algebra question. So I'm asking you to basically take this, plug this in, and then see what y value you're getting out. And you're getting 8, right? I could ask you to do that for any point here, couldn't I? So what is this idea of this limit? Well, the limit is going to ask you a similar question, but from a different perspective. So you're going to have to take off these college algebra goggles and put on some different goggles. What I'm going to ask you now is, what is the function approaching, approaching as x approaches to from the left side? OK, what? All right. I'm asking you to imagine that you are a little person walking along this function from the left side of 2. All right? So here's 2. You're coming in from the left, and you're walking along this function. And I'm asking you, how high are you? OK? As you get closer and closer to 2, right? So x, your, when your x value gets closer to 2, what is your height getting closer to? How high does it look like you're going to get to? 8, right? Does, I mean, this is, it's not supposed to be tricky, all right? But do you agree that as you come in from the left and you walk along this function, you are approaching 8? Yes? OK, what about if you were to come in and start walking in from the right side instead and start walking along this function and approach 2? You would first walk up here and you would go higher than 8, wouldn't you? But as you got closer and closer, you would start coming back down towards 8. Yes? OK. So f of 2 is 8. That's algebra. Coming in from the left-hand side, we are approaching 8. Coming in from the right-hand side, we are approaching 8. That's three different ideas. Yes? OK. I want you to look at a different graph. Can you all see that? I need to move that down a little bit. OK. Again, ignore all this right now, please. OK? Different function. Let's still focus on this value of 2. College algebra question. What is f of 2? 8. You all agree? If I say, go plug 2 into the function, uh, well, that has an open circle, which means it's not defined there, right? But that has a solid a dot, which means that the value of the function at 2 is 8. Agreed? OK. So f of 2 is 8. Now, we put on our calculus goggles. And what we do is we imagine we're going to walk from the left-hand side first towards that x value of 2. And as we walk, what is our y value approaching? 8. Agreed? We're approaching 8 from that left side. But if we come in on the right side, right, we're going to go up a little bit, and then we're going to come back down. And what y value am I approaching? 4. Right? The fact that there's an open hole here bears no, has no bearing on that answer 4. In calculus, we are not interested in looking at what's happening at 2. We're interested in what's happening near 2. Understand the difference between those two questions? So I'll recap the three different things. f of 2 is 8. Coming into 2 from the left is 8. Coming into the, uh, to 2 from the right is 4. Yes? All right. Let's do another one. Hey, that's, I can probably leave those guys there, huh? All right, let's ask the same three questions. What's f of 2? 
f of 2 is 6 now. See? This dot is not up here like it was on the last example. It's in the middle. So f of 2 is 6. What is happening as we approach 2 from the left? Where are we headed? 8. Do you all see that? What happens as we approach 2 from the right? We're headed to 4. So three different answers that time, right? They're all different. We had 6. That's the algebra perspective. From the left, it's 8. From the right, it's 4. No, nope, we're not going to do that. Okay, that's, that's good. I'm going to go back to this one right here. And it's time to give you some notation. Okay, it's time to show you how we write down what I just said verbally. All right, for this problem. We start to use some calculus notation. When we were looking at this first problem, when we plugged in 2, you said 8, so everyone was comfortable with me writing down f of 2 equals 8. But to tell you that I would like for you to do something different, I would like for you to come in from the left-hand side, get close to 2, and tell me what the value is. Here's how I write that down, all right? That's what I write. I write lim. What's that? Yeah, so I use this notation right here, lim, which stands for limit. Okay, that's what this section is about. It's, called, it's about limits. So I write lim, and then underneath lim, I write x with the little arrow pointing to 2. That means um, I'm going to let x approach 2. That means I'm going to be coming into 2, right? But I need to tell you from the left-hand side. So the, re the way I do that is to the top right of 2, I put a negative sign. And here's the way you look at that. With a standard number line, zero's here, right? And negative numbers are here and positive numbers are here. So if I'm going to come in from the left side, I'm coming in from like the negative side of the number line. And that's why we put a minus here. It just indicates I'm coming in from the left. Understand? So this says, hey, look, Lim says you're not in algebra. You're now talking calculus. You don't care about what's happening at 2. You're going to be coming into 2 from the left-hand side. Now, what is it that you'd like for me to look at? What am I actually going to investigate here? Well, that function, right? So I need to tell you that. So I write f of x here. So you're going to look at the f of x function, or you're going to look at the f function, and you're going to come into 2 from the left. Yes? And what did we say the answer was on this particular problem? Eight. It was 8. How about limit, what would I write if I wanted to approach 2 from the right-hand side? What do you think I'd write here? Get x approaching 2, and then a little plus in the top right-hand corner. And then we write f of x. And what was it in this problem as we came in from the right? It was 8. Bless you. All right, this right here, this one, is called the left hand limit. And this one is called the right hand limit. In this particular problem, the function's value at 2 was 8, and both the left and right hand limits were 8, weren't they? And notice that in this function, this is a very nice function. At that point and near it, everything kind of behaves well. It's almost like I can draw it without picking up my pencil, right? It's a very nice function that, that it allows me to draw it that way. Let's look at the next example and see that when we don't have these things match up, your graph looks different. So this one right here. So for this one, my notation would be the same here. f of 2 is 8, yes? The limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the function is 8, is that right? Yes? 
the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of the function is 8? No. This should be what? What's this? 4. four right? 4. Because as we came into 2 from the right, we were approaching the value of 4. Now, did we ever, did we ever actually get to 4? We never actually get to 4. If we're, if we're like really close to 2 on this side and plug it in here, we'll be just slightly above 4, right? But calculus is asking what's happening is you're getting close to something. This is a, this is a monumental like, difference in college algebra and calculus. In algebra, we want to know exactly the value of the function at 2. In calculus, we want to know the behavior of the function near 2. How is it behaving? What is it getting closer to? But you're never actually letting it get to 2. And I'm sure you're sitting there going, why? <laughs> like, why? Who cares, right? Yes? I mean, you, come on. You've got to ask yourself the question, like, why are we doing this? Why would we even ever care for this, to, like, to look at something like this? And I'm going to show you in a second, all right? Right now, what I want you to see is that calculus allows you to step a little bit away from a point, like 2, and see what's happening near it. Yes? OK. So for the next one, I'm going to draw you one, and I'm going to ask you to give me some um, answers. OK, so I'm going to just. I'm just going to make this one up on the fly here. Your graph, your picture, if you're going to draw this, does not have to be perfect, OK? All right, so there's my x, y axes. And now here, I'm going to draw a function in here, f. Here it comes. Can you see that pretty good? First question. I'd like for, who, if you're going to answer me, I'd like for you to raise your hand, OK? Because I don't want the same person answering over and over. So if you can answer once, but that's it. OK, first question. f of negative 2. And this is the function f, OK? Just so you know. What is f of negative 2? What do you got? Three? OK, so all you're doing, th this is an algebra question, right? You're just going over to negative 2. You're saying, hey, what's the y value? 1, 2, 3. It looks like it's 3. Everyone agree? 3? OK, good. Part B, what is the limit as x approaches negative 2 with that little m minus sign there? So who wants that one? Go ahead. Two. two. Very good. So as you're approaching negative two, so here's negative two, right? So we're walking along this graph, and that means we're here, right? And so we're watching what is our, what is our y value approaching. We're getting closer and closer to that y value of two. Make sense? Look, this is, these, these limits, it's like light bulb. It's either on or off here. So are you all understanding this? Anyone having an issue? Limits two. OK, how about C? What's limit x approaches negative 2 from the left or right? I'm not going to tell you what that is. So what is that? Who wants that one? Go ahead. 3. 
Good. So you're, you're approaching negative 2 again. This time you're coming in from the right because it's a plus sign. And so you're walking along here and you're saying, hey, how high am I as I get closer to that? And it looks like it's about 3. Yes? Good. Part D. I want to change something in my graph real quick. This won't, this won't hurt to do it. I'd like right here where it crosses through, I'd like for you to make that just an open circle like that. All right, here we go. Go ahead. One. Good. So we're approaching zero from the left. So here's zero on the x-axis. We're approaching it from the left, so we're coming in like this. And we're walking. It looks like the height there is one, isn't it? So we got one. What's the uh, same limit as x approaches zero from the right of this function? So who wants that one? Go ahead. It's one also, right? And it's because as you come into zero from the right, you're approaching the same value. So from the left and from the right, you're approaching it, right? F. I didn't ask you the algebra question, though. Who wants that one? Have you answered? No. You haven't answered? No. Okay, what do you got? Doesn't need Doesn't need We'll use uh, undefined. 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 Okay, so look. Now we're asking the algebra question, what is the function's value at zero? So you actually go to zero and you look for part of your graph, but there's no graph, right? There's an open hole, there's no dots anywhere. So it's undefined, the function is undefined here. that one. Okay, Google. Give me a random number between 1 and 26. Coming right up. It's kind of fun. 18. 18. Miguel? Where's Miguel? You're up, Miguel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on you all, okay? I'm sorry. I mean, it's just... You're going to say negative one? So tell me what you're thinking. Can, can you help me, like, try and understand what you're, where you're coming up with negative one? Okay, so you're looking, you're looking at, here's three. That's X is three, right? And you're approaching it from which side? Right side. Right side. So you're walking along this part of the graph, right? Yeah. OK. okay negative, two. negative 2. Good. So as you're walking along here, the, the y value is negative 2. Do you all see that? OK, good. Negative 2. <laughs> 